Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and now this is the situation report for the day of 846 for, to 847 for the 18th to 19th of June. Commander, you know what to do. I'm not going to tell you, but yeah, uh, remember to brief. So uh, so now we're going to start off with the frontline changes report. Uh, after the frontline changes report published yesterday, there is still uh, a few more updates. So over at Voschance, uh, on the uh, at the Kaki front, Kalinina, Natalove, and Volodyr Mirivka. So there are still some frontline changes, and uh, there's some. Uh, the first one is actually a good news for the Ukrainians. So, uh, over at first chance, Ukrainian forces now geo located on this eastern part of uh, first chance on the eastern outskirts, I would say. And uh, this shows that the Ukrainian forces are now on the counter, counter attack and are uh, invalidating some of this Russian. Uh, uh positions so according to the this information it says that the ukrainian uh, forces are you kind know, of clearing out one of the strongholds here as the ukrainians pushing out here and something that i did i think i believe i may have talked about i think this is pretty a uh, good way to you know distract the russians i re believe i really believe i said this in one of the videos that the russians will be forced to react to a ukrainian uh, attack on the eastern part so relieving the the, the pressure over in the center oh uh, after this frontline change, we have the frontline change over at Kalanina. So this is over at the Bakhmut front. So this uh, the infamous Bakhmut city or used to be also called Wagner land. And uh, so uh, the, the Russian forces again is geolocated uh, over at this canal. However, this Joe location is not of soldiers that is alive. All of them are dead. One of them is totally charred. Um, so some horrible, horrible video footage of Joe located by Deep State UA. So uh, as such, I have mapped this as a presence. So it's just going to be a Russian presence, which means that this is going to be a gray zone because this is the second time the Russians have been Joe located here, which means that the, they have pretty... Uh, easy access to this position however this area here clearly is heavily defended uh, traveling here is a death sentence which also means that there's a possibility that there is no ukrainian forces in the uh, village over here or the town over here um yeah the, it's quite surprising that the russians tried the same thing twice um not surprising actually <laughs> no because the russian lightnings strike twice no in the same place uh, sometimes three times so um so after kalinina we go over to Natalove. so at Natalove at the at the fk front russian forces has been geo located uh to be attacking in this uh, northern area here i'm not sure if this part of kalifka the russian forces are pushing uh through the forest they have been geo located near the coast so they are attacking as per i mentioned before uh to take this uh crossing i Someone mentioned this. There's another word for this, not causeway, something else. But I forgot again the word, so, so forget it. No, uh, yeah, that, that piece of land between the two lakes. So, and the last frontline change is over at Volodymyrivka. And uh, this is in the northern part of Volodymyrivka at the Donetsk front. This is for Dian. Uh, so let so lot K further up north, we have Novo Mihailivka, Konstantinivka. So, uh, Russian forces Joe located uh, here, uh, which shows that uh the russian forces has actually taken this round and uh basically the front line is a lot more straighter than previously understood the but this footage is actually pretty old it's actually taken uh around june the 7th or no or earlier so it's around two weeks old already so this footage is only just came out so it's a bit late but uh it shows a much more sensible front line with the russian front line looking more like this makes more sense so that's all for the frontline changes report. And uh, so uh, for those that want to support uh, DPA's work, uh, be it in the geopolitical side or the Ukraine world reporting, you no, know, do consider supporting financially through the Patreon locals, Boosty and coffee.com uh, because yeah, it allows me to have some kind of bu a buffer, you no, know, uh, like, like what Ukraine is to NATO to allow me to continue to work on this irregardless of the you no know, fluctuation in terms of the viewership. The link to the uh, various platforms is in the description below. And also, you know, do check out the DPA forum, DPA Telegram, Twitter, as well as DPA chat, Discord, you no, know, all in the description below. We're going to continue into the strategy and tactical reporting. And as usual, we'll go into the Kharkiv front first. So uh, I have put up a uh 
update on the Kharkiv front. So I will not go into further details. Uh, not not that much details because this is a situ situation report. There is an analysis report, so it's kind of different. Um, so in the situation report, uh, uh, the Russian forces continue to be uh, attacking in the Kharkiv front, with the Ukrainians also conducting counteroffensive operations. Russians attack Lipsy, Ukrainians attack Hiboke, Russians attack in the area of uh, Zeline, I believe. Uh, Zeline, they attack Staricia, Senenikove. As well as uh, battling battles continue at Voschans, and uh, there is a uh, Ukrainian counter attack over at Voschans, as we see in the frontline changes report. I don't think we have anything about the fighting over at Taike, but uh, it can be imagined that the Russians are attacking around there. So this is a strategic situation over at the at this uh, Kharki front. Ukrainian forces are con concentrating forces over at Ibitske as well as in the west of. Uh, uh, west of Voschans in the south of Kherdikshev. Uh, so, and also this the the entire situation. It seems like the Ukrainians are planning something big. So, so could be a push, uh, in these two direction to wipe out uh, this area. Maybe hit to the north of Voschans to relieve the entire siege on Voschans. That's also a possibility. So, um, so uh, over there's uh, over at the Kozacha Lopan region, north of Kozacha Lopan, there is some uh, artillery strike geolocating uh, Ukrainian forces over at the border region. Over at the Lipsy region, uh, Russian forces are now pushing back at Lipsy. Uh, based on Russian mapping, they claim that they are back at the edge of Lipsy again, taking most of the high ground. Ukrainian forces allegedly is counter-attacking they are also continuing to continuing their push over at Klipoke. So uh, we will continue to see how this develop over the Lipsy sector. Uh, very interesting, I would say. Uh, over at the Nakushni, uh, Nakushni uh, sector, Russian forces are fighting in the area of Zeline, conducting uh, fire attacks against Russian, uh, Ukrainian forces over at Nakushni. Uh, so there are still some uh, skirmishes over here. Over uh, over at this uh, Ibiske region, uh, geolocation uh, continued. Uh, Ukrainian forces continue to be geolocated at the border, confirming that uh, this uh, this Russian claim is uh, invalidated. However, we we have a new report of fighting at Staricia. Uh, this has been uh, after one week. We haven't seen any reports of fighting uh, in this area for one week. Russian forces are now attacking Staricia again. We again still have some uh, reports about some actions at, on uh, Stanikove. We're not sure if this is an uh, attack or is this just shelling. So most likely it's just shelling report unless the Russians have crossed the river and entered through the forest. However, it will be a bit contradicting because the Ukrainian forces are gathering some forces in this uh, Khadishev region. Khadishev is here. So we will just you know, see how this develop. Over at the Voschan sector, uh, at the Vos Battle of Voschan, Russian forces are still attacking the Ukrainian forces over here, as well as some new drone location of FBV drone attacks on Ukrainian forces within the salient. Ukrainian forces, however, drone located on the eastern outskirts, uh, showing that the Ukrainians are on the counter on the eastern part. This is something they have mentioned before, I predicted before, uh, that it makes sense so that to draw Russian attention, and uh, to reinforce the other side and uh, relieve the pressure on the Ukrainian forces at the salient. That is a possibility. Um, Ukrainian, uh, sorry, Russian mapping, deep, uh, or Russian uh, Osin, uh, Raiba, they, they acknowledge that Taike is not under Russian control. So clearly they, they are not sure after the initial report of, uh, of Taike being possibly captured by the Russian forces. Ever since there is no news, uh, and only until this Joe location that came out that we have reported on that uh, confirmed that uh, the Russians have not captured Taike or have lost Taike. And uh, now Ryber have acknowledged that Taike is not under Russian control. So all of this uh, flag and everything will be removed uh, after this uh, zip wrap. It will be, uh, in the next zip wrap, we will not see this anymore. So uh, we're going to move on. So that's all, I guess. Um, furthest away, okay, the the, the the big forces that is a Joe um, gathering is being reported by Raiba. Uh, but there is no... No, they, they say there is accumulation of reserves. I feel that the Ukrainians may be planning something big, but we're not sure yet. Uh, because a lot of the a lot of the time, this sort of report turns out to be a no a nothing burger. No, like you buy a burger, there's nothing inside, and then you have to ask for a refund. 
So you know, remember to ask for the refund. Like, why the hell you give me air burger? No, and uh, there is some shelling reported at Volos Kiske. Uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, very out of the place, so not important. So that's all for the Kharkiv front. We move into the Kupians front. At the Kupians front, uh, the Russian forces continue their offensive in this area here. We're fighting reported at Sinkivka, towards Petropolivka, over at uh, this Stepova Nova Selivka, as well as Pishane. So this is a uh, very similar situation as per two days ago. Um, Russian forces continue to put pressure. Uh, that's about it. Uh, over at the Sviatove front, uh, we have a little bit more action. Russian forces attacking at Stemakivka. They're attacking at Novo Vodian region towards Krakivka as well as Makievka. So, uh, so previously, remember, we have uh, this rumor from the Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian side saying that the Russians have this massive force uh, gathering over in this uh, direction, in this area here. The, the, in this area here, the Russians are possibly making planning to make some big offensive around here haven't happened yet um so we shall see and all again i said i would say that it makes no sense to penetrate through and you can see the number of uh, entrenchment around here yeah why would the russians just want to penetrate through the heaviest defending uh defended area just go around man uh, so so we shall see you know we shall develop uh, we shall see how this develop um the bridge over near borova at a uh, horov horov Hor uh, the bridge here got destroyed again. Uh, so yeah, it got blew up. So yeah. You are now trapped with me. <laughs> Maybe that's what the Russian thing. You know, um so we move into uh criminal front. At the criminal front, um Russian forces are attacking at Terni, Toske. Dibrova and through the Serebransky Forestry. And the Serebransky Forestry, we have a geolocation of airstrikes on Ukrainian positions within the forest. Uh, Liman also sees some uh, airstrike as well. So, uh, and then there's one more uh, south of Toske. This part of the same report uh, showing the Russian airstrikes on the various positions at the criminal front. Yep, so that's all. Uh, we move further south into the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, Russian forces shout. Serbianka attacking at Vukom Okanyamske, Sperne, Vimka, as well as Rozdolevka. This information coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Ukrainian Defense Ministry is the one that is reporting all this attack. This is not Russian propaganda. This is Ukrainian misinformation. Actually, there's nothing happening over there. They are just eating ice cream, no dancing, playing football together. No, I'm just joking. Clearly, right? They are fighting. So Ukrainians don't lie. So the there is a geolocation location of um guided artillery hitting a Ukrainian artillery east, sorry, west of Sivas. So yeah, that's the that's the that's all we have over at the Sivas front. Um pretty concerning, you know, looking at this number of uh, attacks in this area here. And you can see the pressure is pretty fierce. There's a lot of pressure uh on the Ukrainians in these various regions. So Let's see how the Ukrainians can deal with it. Over at the Bakhmut front, at the northern northern flank of the Bakhmut front, let me see how do I adjust this. Okay, northern flank, there is only uh, fi there's fighting reported towards Minkivka. So previously, Minkivka is new to be a uh, uh, a forward operating position and uh, something like a HQ, and the Russians are attacking here. The last attack was in the May. So it was quite some time ago, and I feel that I need to start to put some, you know, I put this so to show that you know is a uh, so maybe this twenty twenty four, yeah. So because we, we are reaching September very soon uh, as we go move forward, and then the dates are going to get very confusing. So I I got to do this. So maybe maybe I will start to you know maybe in the next zip wrap you'll see all these updated you know H, uh, titles. So. The Russian forces are pushing down the highway. I don't think this is this is so-called if I'm in command, this is my pre preferred direction of attack. But uh, we do not know. This is probably just some skirmish over this region. Over at the center central part of uh, Bakhmut, fighting is reported at uh, Khoikhorevka towards Kalinina, uh, towards uh, this is Novi, uh, near Chastifia and Ivaniske. So the Russians are making this push again drawing a uh, ukrainian attention to this area ukrainians are defending novi and of course you know at the at the canal region the main defense line of course is along the canal so uh my opinion is the russians will not will not bother 
to really you know take Chasifia for now unless the Ukrainians abandon it. So uh, moving south, in the southern flank, uh, there is uh, fighting reported near Pritashne, according to uh, the Russian Defense Ministry. This is probably just some shelling report rather than an attack, but no, I just put it as such. Uh, there is some geo location of Ukrainian uh, Russian forces at Klishevka. So this is the first geo location of Russian expansion of control uh, since they have announced that they have captured it. And clearly, uh, the lack of uh, evidence means that Russian Russian forces haven't really fully captured Klishevka. As well as this geo location is an is Russian forces attacked by Ukrainian drones. So you know. They do not have it uh, easy as well. So not, not exactly you know, a full capture in my opinion. So you can see these two captures is continue to be unverified. Uh, further, at the most southern point, at the Mayos, uh, this region here starting to flare up. Russian forces have uh, launched an attack in the north of Mayos as well as towards Druzba and Pishnevchne. So this attack is very significant. Uh, as it was reported by uh, Deep State UA as well as acknowledged by the uh, Russian reporting by Riva. So this attack is pretty significant right now. I have made an analysis uh, on this situation, uh, the Torex offensive, because uh, the main city over here is Torex. Uh, but I do not, uh, I do not have, uh, I do not believe this is a legitimate offensive. Like this is just, you know, another Kharkiv offensive where they, they push the front line and then you know try to draw you know draw Ukrainians in and then it's going to pin them there. So I you can watch the analysis I posted it I posted it on the main channel. You can check it out. I will also put it in the link in the description. Oh no, I will put it in the link at the end of the video. So yeah, so this is the current situation over here. And according to Raiba, this uh at this New York front, uh, the offensive seems to be a lot bigger. Uh, it's not just towards Druzba and uh, Pivnishny. But they are also attacking at Pivdeni as well as New York. And uh, this is reported by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry themselves as well. So uh, so this this could be a, a big offensive to uh to really you know, draw the Ukrainians uh, resources into this region here. Because this region has been a steepy, very steepy front. Everybody is Biden over here, they're very sleepy. So um the the fact that the Russians are trying to trigger um attention into this region could be Kharkiv offensive number two just to you know, create more diversions more stress to the Ukrainian logistic and uh, manpower so it is possible that this is uh, happening right now so but we shall see how this how long this will last typically limited offensive are around one week uh, from the Russians unless it failed miserably then it will end in three days so we shall see how long this lasts Shaolin is be, being reported at Torex as well, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So um, further south, over at Oleksandropil, Russian forces are attacking. And uh, over also, the, there's some frontline change near Novo Bakhmutivka, showing this probably is not the same offensive you know, in this area here. Uh, but this is probably unrelated to the New York front uh, offensive because Oleksandropil in the reporting seems to be more related to the DFK front. But we shall see. Uh, over at the DFK front in the northern flank, in the northern flank, we have uh, Russian forces attacking towards uh, Vodiz, Vodizenka, fighting reported at Novo Oleksandrivka. Joe location showing that the Russians exactly is at uh, where we have mapped this uh, uh, Russian front line. Russians are attacking uh, attacking at Sokyu, attacking towards Yekhanivka. Ukrainian forces Joe located at Sokyu and Yekhanivka. And uh, the one at Sokyu actually caused some front line change in the in um in favor of the Ukrainians, uh, where the where this is, I think it's a Bradley, yeah, it's a Bradley infantry fighting vehicle, you know, getting destroyed by FPV drone, but that only shows Ukrainian presence at that area. In the in the uh central flank, uh, Russian forces are putting a lot of pressure over at Novo Selivka, Persia, as well as Novo Porovsky. The number of Joe locations around here shows that the Ukrainians may be on a counter-offensive in this area as well. Uh, but it's not reported. It's only geolocated. Uh, or the Russians are just making a very heavy push uh, to strike the Ukrainian positions around here. 
Russians, Russia also shelled Komishivka again and uh, they're attacking in the area of Umanske. So uh, the this fighting over here seems to be the fiercest uh, given the number of geolocation that uh, number of videos that came out from this region. Russia is also pushing Yesno Brodevka. So very fierce uh, fighting around here. Joe location just off Zelene, uh, which is a Bradley infantry fighting vehicle getting striked by drone. Uh, further in the southern flank, Russian forces are attacking uh, Kalivka and also, of course, Joe located uh, moving towards this causeway or this something uh, that I forgot the name for, uh, so which I already reported or no. Uh, proposed that it's most likely it's going to happen. So if we zoom out a bit uh, for the DFK front, uh, there's a lot of things. There's attacking in the uh, attacking in the Novo Bamotivka, Novo Alexandrovka region towards uh, Vodizenka, Novo Alexandrovka, Yekhanivka, Sokil, uh, Novo Broske, uh, no Selika, Novo Selivka, Persia, Komishivka, Umanske, Yasno Obrovka, Kalivka, and uh, you can see. Yeah, this is a massive, massive offensive. This is the biggest offensive among all the fronts. And uh, this is exactly where the Russian front lines continues to be. And uh, so just to use a different mapping, we can see that uh, where the Russians may be pushing for, I believe is the this river over here. Uh, what is this river name? Uh, Voscha River. Okay, this is the Voscha River. How is the Voscha River? Sounds the same as the Voschans, Voscha, Voschans one. So... Uh, so the Russian forces probably is trying to push to this line and uh, because this makes a very good defensive line so I believe the Russians may push there but of course uh, there's high ground around here so may not be the best place to you know, hold a front line but uh, this is currently what is covering happening and uh, we move on uh, to the battle of Krasnohorivka the battle is still ongoing this is at the Donetsk front but uh, there is no news regarding the Krasnohorivka situation. Moving out, uh, there is some uh, frontline changes. Ukrainian forces are located here, Russians are located here. So this changed the front line in this way. This one straightened it a bit more. So that is the frontline changes. Uh, and then we have the infantry fighting vehicle getting destroyed north of uh, Mikhilsky. But that's about it in this area. Uh, then we have these reports from the Russian Defense Ministry about them attacking Ukrainian forces at Polivka at and Shevchenko. Uh, I'm not sure if this is some kind of offensive. Uh, we shall see. We shall see. Give me a second. Yeah, itchy nose. So uh, that's all for this area. We will continue to monitor to see if this is a sustained thing. Uh, this very only recent on the. Uh, this on uh, yesterday's Russian Defense Ministry report. Uh, over at this uh, Velikan Novosilka sector, so uh, this area here seems to be a bit more, uh, a bit interesting. You, oops, oops, sorry. Ukraine forces counterattack at Staro Mayoske, Russian forces attack at Uruzaine, and there is this attack reported towards Novo Darivka. Uh, shelling at Blahodatne as well as uh, further up north over at Nikoshne. So, um, this is interesting as usual, uh, but this usually not, doesn't, um, uh, the attack towards Novo Darivka usually do not turn out to be something important. I think the main battle is still around Staro Mayoske and Uru Zaini. So, so that's all from this uh, Velikan Novo Circle sector. Over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, this front started to get a bit more busy. So if uh, we can, we can uh, we have reports of fighting reported at Mafopil, Charlie at Zelish, uh, Zelish Shne. At Zalishne, uh, there is attack towards Malatumashka, towards Novo Danilivka, over ne uh, Nesterianka, as well as Kayamske. So it's starting to get a bit more busy around the Zaporizhia front. Um, it's still not clear if there is some kind of offensive or no major offensive developing around here, but it's starting to get a little bit more you know, activated. I'm not sure they, they want to start another Kharkiv offensive around here. Uh, so it, it could possibly be. So anyway, we shall just wait and see how this develops. Some geo locations of Ukrainian forces uh, just off Novoporovska, uh, showing Ukrainians actually have a large, a much more closer position uh, to Novoporovska than previously understood. Uh, so this is a uh, Russian claim invalidated. And uh, Russian forces over at Novo Pro uh, at Robotine geo located at the tree line, confirming that they have expanded control. However, uh, this geolocation is a bad one. 
uh, not bad in terms of the location, but the bad in the, what it was being geolocated. Uh, four POWs are allegedly uh, assess, uh, not uh, allegedly you know murdered uh, by the Russian forces that captured them. So yeah, so not not a good geolocation in that sense. And uh, over at uh, this Vodizhenka, there is Russian airstrike being reported here. Uh, so a bit weird, a bit far. I'm not sure if I get the right, the correct position. Uh, but this is geolocated by military summary, so you know, yeah, if it's wrong, it's military summary is fault. <laughs> so that's all for the uh, Zaporizhia front. And uh, over at the Kherson front, we have Shaling reported at also Korivka as well as in the north of Sadove at Darivka. So some sh uh, some uh, shelling being reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. Uh, there is no no fighting reported at Krinky. Some people ask whether you no know, Krinky Ukrainians are still at Krinky. Uh, tentatively, it seems like they might still be there, uh, but there is not much reporting about that situation around there. So we'll just have to wait and see. You know if there's any you no know, confirmation. Uh, you know from the Ukrainian side whether or from the Russian side if there's anything happening over there so that's all from the Kherson front and that's about it so this is the situation report or the separate border summary for the day of 846 to 847 for the 18 to 19 of June see you in the next update